Welcome to Culture Couch Live. This week we got Mel, Chris, and Mark. How are we, crew? Excellent. Well. Excellent. Very, very good. Um, something we do in workshops often is ask the newest person. So, question without notice for the Culture Couch Live today. We got Chris and Mark are our newest members, mm. Mel. I'm going to ask you two, um, and you can may or may not have the same answer, but what has jumped off the page to you with the PBD system? If you were to say to someone, this is what, yeah, this is the special source for PBD, what would that be? Mark, I'll, I'll start nice. with you. Yeah. Uh, we, we love questions without notice, Rosie. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go straight to uh, Real Talk. Yeah, real talk for me is, yeah, and, and I've lived and breathed the PBD system in, in other businesses and, and also at a, at a sporting club, being being the Melbourne yeah. Football Club, who playing the AFL here in Australia. And real talk is is really the the, the thing or the, the tool, I should say, or the activity that, that we do that very little other businesses do um, and all consultants really, really stands out. But we, what we have to know is we have to go through the steps and we have to systemize everything yeah. else within the PVD system to get to that stage of real talk. You can't just go straight there. But real talk, well, undoubtedly, and and for those that are that are uh, yep. listening at home, real talk for us is open and honest conversations in the workplace, both identifying things that we're doing well, but also catching um, catching those things that we need to potentially do better or areas for growth. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and we'll unpack that, Chris. What about for you? Yeah, it's funny. Because when you think about the elements of the work that we do, I think the one thing that really stands out that's unique is in that real talk space. Mm -hmm. um, the, the things that I've seen and the feedback, even from leaders receiving the feedback, uh, receiving the real talk, is that they, they've gotten insights that they hadn't gotten previously, whether yeah. it be in, you know, anonymous 360 uh, hey. style feedback where you would think that that, but it tends to be the most toxic um, yeah. So yeah, I think I'd have to agree with Mark on that. That the the real talk really is the the secret sauce here. Well, that makes my job easy because we don't have to bounce off two subjects. So well done, boys. <laughs> I hope you it on that. So let's let's unpack it because it's coming from the field that I've come. I'd probably tend to agree that it's probably the biggest, the single biggest gap between a sporting team and and the corporate world. You know, I've lived off feedback since I walked into a footy club in 1980. And um, to be perfectly frank, some of it's pretty brutal in the early 80s. And it makes me shake just to think about it. Um, but the reality is that's the, that's the world that I lived in for so long. So, Mel, I'm going to touch on something that Mark said. I think often the missing piece is in the corporate world is the system that goes around real talk I, I don't think people really understand there has to be a process before we get to real talk I'm, I'm horrified with anonymous 360 feedback I also remember a conversation I had with a guy early days when we we started PBD and we, we had a chat on the phone and I said look went through the system he said yeah no we did some um feedback yesterday I said oh okay what was it based on he said what do you mean I said well what did you do he goes no no we just stood around and gave each other feedback and I'm like yeah but what was what framework did you give the feedback on? He said, we didn't have a framework. I said, how'd it go? He goes, no, not very well. And I'm like, you know, surprise, surprise. So let's take what Chris and Mark have said, Mel. Mm -hmm. I think it has to have a system prior to the real talk. Agree or disagree? It, oh, absolutely, Rosie. And we, we spend a lot of time. Um, and I think just to reinforce what's been said, I love that that's the consensus in this group because – it's yeah. okay to say, you know, it's it's great to give feedback, but it's not just great, it's actually essential in high performing teams. And the fact that it's we've watched it as consultants become crystallized in the work that we do, I think it's great to hear that that's that's um an area that's that's agreed, sort of. And I'm I'm absolutely with with um Chris and Mark. So in terms of the systemization. I think there's a lot of components that make it powerful and it's not just standing around and doing it ad hoc. Um, for for yeah. feedback and real talk to be powerful, it needs to come from a place of care and it needs to, intention is the most important piece. So when the intention is good and it comes from a place of making us better as individuals and as a team, then that becomes the core of, of, the, of the work really. And that's when it's delivered and accepted much more readily. So... Yeah. 
terms of part of the systemization, Rosie, I think is just about establishing why we're doing it um, and creating the acceptance of that feedback. And then it's like, I mean, I describe it as a muscle with the clients that I speak with. It's, the more you do it, the easier it gets, both to yeah. give it um, and receive it. So building those that that feedback muscle, if you will, um, actually takes systemization. It's like anything else. When you pick up a weight at the gym, you need to be conscious of your back. You need to be conscious of all of the yeah. different things that you're doing. And it's the same when you're giving feedback. You're giving it from care. And when you're receiving it, you're understanding that it's coming from a place of care to make to make you better and make the team better. So there are systems it's it's a that that underpin robust feedback. Yeah, hundred percent agree. So Mark, why do you think it is so hard in the corporate world? I've just explained my experience of walking into a footy club as a sixteen year old. So that's just what happened. What do you think the basis of the lack of feedback, where does that come from? Because to, as Mel, you've articulated really well, we, we give it because it's from the heart and we care and we want to make people better. That That's the only reason we give feedback. What do you think is, or why do you think it's become such a difficult conversation in the, in the workplace? Well, yeah, there's, I think there's probably two parts to it. One, there's not a culture of feedback in, in corporate spaces, you know, unlike footy. And that's, you know, that's, come over generations as well and and you know you know when you started that culture of feedback probably didn't exist as it does now in footy clubs so it's taken a lot longer to start to embed that into into the corporate space but it's also not a, really a, a willingness of the leaders to understand how they need to improve and and we talk about role model leading it comes from yeah. the top but the leader has to be willing and able to actually create that themselves and be willing to to sort of set the tone and i don't think leaders are and, and maybe that's because they don't want to know um maybe because they're afraid of what's going to come back um or they just don't they think they don't have time but we know to mel's point high performing teams have to have open conversations because you don't know what you don't know like i don't know how i need to improve if i don't allow my team to have that conversation with me and i want to pick up on that leadership thing chris because i think the greatest myth about being a leader is you have to know everything. I, I I say this, it drives me crazy. I've never met a perfect leader and I've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of footy people and non-football people. Except I haven't seen the perfect leader. And what Mark's saying I think is right. As leaders, we think we know everything. And all of a sudden, if I get some feedback that I'm not good at something, it's threatening. It's not threatening. It, it It's actually designed to make you feel better. So I think that self-awareness piece is really critical to create feedback, Chris. Yeah, it's interesting because it, one of the things we talk about is that the leaders should speak last in a lot of the, in, a, in our meetings or or in several elements of our workshops, right? And, and when the leader speaks last, it allows the room and the people in that room to express themselves and they would learn so much more by just listening yeah. and being able to respond in that because I feel like, especially in the States, I think there's probably a little difference in uh, in our culture in the sense that we feel like we have to be out front. We have to be the one carrying the flag, you know, speed of the general, speed of the troops mentality. And a lot of times we go, we, we're tone deaf as leaders because we take that approach. And so mm -hmm. I think, I think the leader that can set their ego aside in the sense that, and is it ego? Is it just the sense of purpose that that's how I'm supposed to lead? Yeah, uh, it probably changes from one leader to the next, but I think the leader that speaks last can learn so much more from their team and have an understanding of where strengths and weaknesses lie within their team. I think also that we need to redefine what feedback is because I find, yeah, you know, when we're doing the real talk session, Mark, as you touched on, you can see people tense up, but when we actually do it and we give positive feedback, you can see the shoulders just relaxing again, going, oh, that was awesome. So when we're talking about feedback, Mel, we're not just talking about room for improvements. We're actually saying feedback is, oh, thanks guys for being on time for the Culture Cast Live. That was awesome. Um, that's feedback. But I think we have this notion in the corporate space because of the the setup that we is typically there, three month review or six month review. Yeah, everyone gets uh, and you store these things up that are somewhat irrelevant now. You get tense, you're tense, I'm giving the feedback, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got to redefine this notion of feedback as well, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing is that I think in corporate in particular, um, when somebody's can I give you some feedback, the expectation is that it'll be jarring negative feedback. <laughs> yeah. you know, and, it's, and I remember that 
you know, in, in my experience as well. And and to your point about the structured nature of that, we don't need to wait for a formal review to give yeah. one another feedback. Um, the other thing that happens if we do that is that the incidents, the specific examples become blown up because we've had, someone's been sitting on it for six months. So we also know that real-time feedback is much more effective than harbouring things and saving a list of things that you want to tell somebody. So the safety around giving that feedback is, is imperative. Um, and the one thing that I wanted to add, because we know that every leader has different traits, as we as we know, but the one common denominator for all great leaders is self-awareness. Yeah. And if you're not garnering that from the people around you, then you're in the Wild West, frankly, in a lot of ways, um, in terms of um, self-awareness. So, you know, we judge ourselves by our intentions and others by their actions. So if we're not getting that 360 loop, then we're missing a big piece of self-development um, for our self-awareness and our own improvement. So why yeah, wouldn't you? No, I agree. I, I, it's, again, it's just a, such a foreign concept to me, having been a you know, football player and then being a coach. Is like, imagine, uh, I'll, uh, I'll articulate another way. Imagine if you whatever your team is, you're Farrakhan for Carlton now and Bossy didn't give any feedback to your players. What, what would you do with your membership ticket? You'd, you'd, rip, you'd rip it up real quick. <laughs> you'd rip it up real. Yeah. You'd rip it up real quick. I know there's a few Carlton sports that were ripping up three weeks ago. I think they're trying to put them back together again now. But, <laughs> but, but that's another way to look at it. It's un. It's so unfair, Mark, isn't it? On the person or people you're managing, it's mm. unfair not to give them feedback because we're not actually giving them the opportunity to, to improve. Yeah, absolutely, and and. Yeah, as leaders or as, as managers or um, C-suite, you employ people not only for the job that they can do, but for the ideas that they can add, for the, the character that they bring to the yeah. organisation. And that that's a big part of you know, inclusivity. It's it's understanding that everyone's got their own views and ideas, but unless you welcome them in, then you're not yeah. going to get them. And 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 people just stay silent. Um, I also wanted to add, and it's probably something I didn't mention before, and we've sort of covered it off, but... Yeah, you talked about self-awareness, Rosie, but Mel talked about safety, is that a lot of the work that you've got to do to get to that stage where you have psychological safety to have conversations, corporates don't yeah. do that and don't do it very well. So getting to have real the relationship talk, building piece is important. So important. It? So important. Yeah. And just don't do that. And it's not relationships at the pub after work. It's relationships yeah. you know, in the space of work while you're under stress. That's the really important. Like, what do you do under stress? Do you look after your teammates or do you go into, into your shell and, and disappear? And that's and that's the system, isn't it? The culture code, yeah, the the the, the insights, the profile, and the relationship piece, which gets to the the real talk. Because I I know you love the the shout out section of, and it is a technique for people at home. Yeah, the, the shout outs is a really good way. And and how many times in a workshop have we seen people, yeah, incredibly responding not only to the shout outs they get in the room, but the the text messages that they get. So there are techniques as well where you, you, you don't have to wait for these formal meetings. So share some of those that, that we've experienced together, Chris, which have been amazing. Yeah, it, I, it seems like every time you go into a workshop, you get to experience it. And I think that's what I love so much about this work. I mean, when I was in Toronto with Emil here a, a couple of weeks ago, it came up with a room full of VP level engineers, you know, the, the probably the least touchy feely. Uh, group of people that you'd have and so we have them do the shout outs to you know people in and outside the room and for the people outside the room we ask them to text that shout out to those folks and then we check in with them later on in the day and some of the feedback that they got you know one person uh, texted back to their leader that hey you know what I feel like my career's been on a rocket ship since I've been working with you I feel so much yeah. more empowered, and and so they're getting that kind of feedback, and then yeah, so they're getting the feedback back as well, which I think is the underrated part. It's a, it becomes more of a conversation rather than me giving Mark or me giving you or me giving Mel. We start to have really cool conversations. Well, and I think that's where, you know, when I came to Performance by Design, and I I heard, you know, it, this is really all about performance, and I was trying to put where is yeah. that performance piece. Oh, it comes in there because one of the ladies came back and said that one of the engineers that she shouted out usually would pick up one or two jobs out of the queue and finish it within a day or two. On that day, after he'd picked up his, his shout out, he grabbed four jobs and had them done by three o'clock in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. So just that thought of it really that example right there for that room of 20 people showed the power of positivity in productivity. 
right? Yeah. You get positive feedback. Do you think that person's more or less in, empowered to go do the work? And and what's the quality of that work going to be? Getting positive feedback rather than negative feedback. And, and I think uh, that's the performance piece. Great point, Chris uh, and Mel. I'll, I'll go to you. Is it is about performance. That again, in my head, and you can sense my frustration on this call. I just don't understand it because if we're trying to become better, how do we become better? If we don't share ideas, have conversations, give each other feedback, well done. It's really hard to become a high-performing team if we don't create an environment of open and honest conversations, Mel. Yeah, and I, I think that example from Chris just crystallises it so beautifully. I think that's fantastic because we've all seen it in our in our workshops with our clients that when you're giving somebody good, positive, robust, specific feedback, you'll get that behaviour again. And that's really what we're doing. We're reinforcing, we're telling people what we like about what they do and nine times out of 10, they'll do it again. And so, you know, we talk about don't leave your culture to chance. Yeah. Don't leave the good stuff that you do to chance either. Reinforce it and, and keep it going and improve it the way that Chris exam Chris's example really illuminated. So it's a, it's a really powerful tool and we're all humans at the end of the day, no matter what industry you're in. And the communication loop is 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 imperative. And I think one of the other things, Chris, that you mentioned earlier, when leaders think they need to know it all, the truth is in the research that teams don't expect their leaders to know everything. Yeah. That vulnerability and that ability to say, I don't know, or let's work it out together is, is critical as well for that trust piece. So it's okay if you're a leader and you get feedback. That's fantastic. It's a great reflection on you. Yeah, awesome. That's no, great, guys. Good conversations. I'm glad again, Mark and Chris. Well done. I'm glad you both came up with real talk. But I think that I think that the thing is that there has to be a system around it. We have to do it from a place of care. Yeah, I love Merv talks about right time, right place. Yeah, mm. it's really, really important that we we do that. Yeah, but again, if you're uncomfortable, because Mel, you touched on it, it's like a muscle. But if you're uncomfortable, just start with positive feedback. Mm. Build that muscle first. And then you'll be more comfortable in going, oh, yeah, Mark, and just, you know, what you said yesterday at a meeting, I thought was a bit, you know, could you just be a bit more, whatever it is. It, it's a lot easier to do that. So really good conversation. Well done, boys. I'm glad the real talk, it sort of stands out, doesn't it? It's interesting. Um, we, we had Nathan Jones do a keynote for us as well. I think Murph gave him a question without notice, said, what's the biggest difference between, you know, the corporate world and the footy club? He said, feedback. He said, I just don't get any feedback. Mm -hmm. And I, so, again, and, and I think, to highlight that, what Nathan was saying is give me feedback. You know, mm. if I want feedback, I want, because when you have it and when you're in an environment that gives it and you don't have it, it, it's quite debilitating. It's quite frustrating. So we've sort of got to flip that narrative. You know, now if you're, yeah, you know, at a zero to 10 in the feedback loop, you're not going to get from a two or 10 straight away, but just climb the, climb the charts. You know, if you're a six or seven, which is great keep moving the charts up so we can create a really psychological safe environment and have open and honest conversations. But well done. Thanks, uh, Mel. Thanks, Chris. And thanks, Mark. Thanks, Richie.